Hey kids, glad you're back for the second part of our story, Bicky's Thunder Egg. Last time, you remember, we learned about Bicky Ross and his brother Tommy, who were caught in the attic in the fire of their house and they were thrown out on the snow by their good neighbor, Mr. Red Hog Smith. Their mother was already there and they went over and spent the night with Red Hog Smith. The house burned down and they began to dig around and pull the planks up from underneath the house and they could look in the basement. And as they were looking around the basement, they found this unusual rock. At least they thought it was a rock. It looked like a big stone, about 14 inches. And it was very heavy, not very pretty. And they began to wonder, how are we going to live? And they were thinking about what they would have for food, how they could convert the granary to a place to live. But most important, Mr. Hake Collins was coming to take their $300 mortgage in just five or six months or else they'd have to leave the farm. But there was a secret that Uncle Dirk, Mother Ross's brother, had always talked about. Mr. Ross and Mrs. Ross had moved to Iowa and they were living on this farm and they grew corn, calves, pigs, chickens, all kinds of things. And Uncle Dirk had lived with them at least for the time when he was not in California. He had gone with the California 49ers during the gold rush and then come back to live with them on the farm. Then he and Mr. Ross had gone off to fight in the Civil War and they did not come home from that. Well, as they thought over all that, they began to think, how are we going to live here? How are we going to earn some money? John said, well, I can continue to work in Marshalltown and earn about $10 a week so I'll stay there. Mother, maybe you can stay here on the farm and continue to do some nursing and washing clothes and the little boys can help all they can. And they sure did. They would gather up corn husk and keep by the fire. They'd gather what wood they could to keep the fireplace going and the stove burning brightly when they needed to cook. And they began to settle in and live there. And as they talked and thought, over the weeks and months, they kept thinking and thinking about what Uncle Dirk had said just before he had gone off to the war. He kept saying, don't you worry, there's plenty of money here in this house until we get back from the war, and he would point at the floor. But the floor was gone, the whole house was burned. What did Uncle Dirk mean? Of course, Uncle Dirk, he was always joking around, so maybe that was just another one of his little jokes and they couldn't remember. Besides, they'd looked all over that house before it had burned, couldn't find anything. So they began to think, what else were they going to do? Mother said, I'm gonna put on my nice clothes. John, when you go back to Marshalltown in a couple of days, I'm going to go with you and talk to Mr. Hank Collins. Surely he'll have some mercy on us. It's getting now into the summer, but January is not far away. So she put on her nice clothes, they got on the wagon, and they drove to Marshalltown. She went over to see Hake Collins, but when she left Hake Collins' office, she was very sad. She came home and talked to the boys, and she said, boys, we're going to have to work very hard. We're going to have to grow that corn crop this summer, and it'll have to be the best ever. We're going to live here in the granary because we have to have $300 by January. Well, the summer went by, the boys kept working, they had taken that big stone and John had whitewashed it and they were using it in the house for a prop by some of the doors. And then as the summer left, it was now September, pretty warm, but then October came and they were going to school. They walked to school in those days and it was pretty chilly in October, even some snow flurries from time to time there in Iowa. And as Binky began to look around, he said, oh, what am I going to wear? All of my good clothes were lost. Mother said, don't worry, I have this trunk. And she pulled this trunk that Mr. Red Hog Smith had saved for him and opened it up. And Bicky just was so sad. Oh, Mother, please, not that. So he put on one of the coats that Mother pulled out of the trunk, put on an old plug hat, went off to school. And as he got close to school, the kids began to point and to laugh and say, here comes the soldier boy, here comes the soldier boy. Bicky was coming with one of the old soldier coats that his father and Uncle Dirk had used. It had the swallowtails and he walked and he had the old hat on his head and he walked into school. 
Oh, he and his good friend Pete Whitney and Tommy and Pete Whitney's brother all went to the new school, the Ferguson School, and they had a new teacher this year. But Vicky wasn't too interested in the new teacher because he had to wear these old horrible clothes. At least he thought they were horrible in his mind. They were warm. They did keep out the cold wind. He sat down there on one of the first days of school, and as they were talking and chatting, Pete said, psst, psst, Vicky, Vicky. And he began to peel an onion under his desk. This is what they had for school lunch that day, in many days. They weren't rich people, they had simple bread and an onion sandwich. Doesn't that sound yummy? When I was a little boy, my mother used to make onion sandwiches, and they're not that bad. You might want to try them sometime, kids. But Pete Whitney began to peel that onion, and Miss Kitty said, oh, I smell an onion. Pete stopped peeling it and he took the onion and he tried to roll it across over to Vicky. Vicky tried to reach for it, but he fumbled it. And just at that moment, Miss Kitty came walking by. She said, hand check, hand check. And Vicky and Pete pulled up the onion. Pete lost recess that day. After school, Vicky put on his old soldier coat, put on his hat. He and Tommy and the Whitneys all began to walk home and the wind was blowing something fierce. And as they walked along, the wind came at one big blast and knocked Pete Bicky's hat right off his head and went flying out through the stubble of the cornfield. They said, oh no, and they went and looked everywhere and they could not find the hat. And Bicky said, oh, what am I going to do? I've lost the hat, I've got this old soldier coat. And he went home to mother. And mother said, well, I can try to make you another hat, but it won't be tonight. You're gonna to have to wear the old, old hat that we used to have around here. And Vicky said, please, mom, not that, just a scarf, just a scarf, please. She said, no, Vicky, you've gotta keep good warm hat on your head and the scarf too. We don't want you to get sick or get earaches or anything terrible like that. And Vicky said, oh, do I have to go to school wearing the soldier coat and now an old plug hat? Whatever am I going to do? And what about Uncle Dirk's secret? Was there still some place, something of value could be hidden? And they just hadn't found it yet? And was old Hank Collins going to really kick them off the farm if they didn't have $300? They had raised some of the corn and they had harvested and they were beginning to put it away now down into the fall. Would it be enough? It's starting to get cold. It's October now, January is just a few months away what will happen next? How will they make it through the winter? Will they have enough money? Come back for our next story time.